Most of you watching know that climbing at the start of a game is necessary if you want to do well. But there's also quite a bit of confusion and disagreement regarding how to best go about climbing. Do you climb at a specific angle? A set speed? A set IAS? Should you accelerate first, then zoom climb, or perform a steady climb? There are a lot of conflicting voices from YouTube videos and the War Thunder Wiki to the infamous spreadsheet that hasn't been updated in six years. I've also gotten quite a few requests from people asking me to explain how I determine the ideal speeds for planes to climb at for my videos. So here I'll be going into some of the theory behind how planes climb and then put those theories to the test. One thing that confused me when it came to the climb rate discussion was the idea that for optimal climb rate you need to stay at some ideal IAS, or climb angle, throughout the entirety of your climb. This doesn't make all that much sense to me since, while IAS accounts for the thinning of the atmosphere at higher altitudes, it does not account for the non-linear engine and thrust response due to lower air density. Planes with superchargers have gears that kick in at specific altitudes, while other planes lose WEP above a certain altitude. So surely the ideal IAS to climb at should vary with altitude? The Wikipedia page citing the FAA Pilot's Handbook at least indicates that it is not generally the case that planes should climb at a constant IAS across all altitudes. Starting from the ground up, what are we trying to achieve in a climb? The overall goal we are trying to achieve when trying to optimize climb rate in a plane is to try and find out what airspeed the engine of a plane generates the most excess power, the amount of power left over after overcoming drag. This excess power can be used to either accelerate the plane forward and speed up, or in our case, overcome gravity and push the plane higher. Assuming the plane is not accelerating and climbing at a constant speed, the force balance diagram of a climbing plane looks like this. We can split the thrust and weight vectors into their liftward and dragward components so that all vectors lie on the lift and drag axes. Then, because we know that the plane is in a steady state and the forces should balance out, all the forces along the drag axes should also cancel out, meaning thrust cosine angle of attack equals drag plus weight sine climb angle. With this, we can simplify for the climb angle and then use this to find the vertical component of velocity, the rate of climb. Now to make use of this equation, we would need a way of finding the thrust and drag of the aircraft. However, there aren't any ways of doing this accurately just yet. Thrust is dependent on engine power and prop efficiency, and both of these factors vary non-linearly with altitude and speed, especially with planes with superchargers. There are ways of approximating thrust as well as drag if you want to simplify the aircraft's aerodynamic parameters into constants, but they aren't very accurate, so until we uncover more details on how Gaijin's physics engine works, this is a bit of a dead end. At the very least, we can dismiss the idea that optimal climb speed is independent of altitude. However, there are ways of determining rate of climb experimentally. Remember that our original goal is to find at what speed our plane produces the most excess power. This excess power can be put either into gaining altitude, gaining potential energy, or accelerating, gaining kinetic energy. This means that by tracking how much kinetic and potential energy is gained over a range of speeds at a set altitude, we can see at what speed the maximum excess power is achieved at. To find the power, we take the time derivative of energy and now all we need is a way to log the velocity and altitude over time. The War Thunder real-time application is very handy in that it already has a preset for specific excess power, which calculates it this very exact way. So, here are the steps I use to find the optimal speed to climb at. For a given plane and altitude I want to test at, I start at as low of a speed as possible and start logging as I throttle up, flying in a straight horizontal line. War Thunder RTI will log the data points as I accelerate, letting me sample a range of speeds. Once I'm done sampling, I can check to see at what speed specific excess power is maximized at, meaning that this speed is the optimal climb speed for the plane at this altitude. You can see for the P51H at sea level, it is around 340 km per hour IAS, much faster than a lot of people have previously recommended. 
Then I repeat this procedure again at different altitudes to find the best climb speed at each height. I usually test at sea level, 3 kilometers, and then 6 kilometers to guess an interpolation between the three altitudes. Now to test whether this theory works with a comparison between the different climbing methods. I'll be timing how long it takes for the P51H at min fuel to go from 1 km altitude to 6 km altitude using the following methods. The variable IAS climb that maximizes specific excess power that I've specified just now. Setting the IAS climb at 260 km per hour and 290 kph. And finally, a set angle climb at 17.5 degrees for the nose angle. After testing, the results show very little difference between the methods, but the clear winner is the 17.5 degree climb, definitely not what I was expecting. Taking a closer look at how the specific excess power changes over the different altitudes, we can see that the altitudes of 2 km and 4.4 km are inflection points, which happen to be the altitudes at which the supercharger gears switch, so I guess that makes sense. To get a better climb rate, we would want to calculate the excess power at these altitudes and then interpolate between those speeds instead. Testing again gave max excess power at 340 km per hour at 2 km and 320 km per hour at 4.4 km. And now for a final test, I timed the climb from 1 km to 6 km when following these speeds and was able to show that this method is faster but still tied with the 17.5 degree climb. I have some hypotheses as to why this may be the case. Firstly, the 17.5 degree climb ended at a speed of 260 km per hour while the variable IAS climb ended at 290 km per hour meaning that while they both got to 6 km at the same time, the variable IAS climb ended with more total energy. Also, because micromanaging speed requires small elevator inputs, the additional drag from doing this may have slowed the variable IAS climb. Additionally, in the specific excess power calculation, there is a derivative of velocity, or acceleration term, and the way that Warthunder RTI calculates acceleration involves an exponentially weighted average, which may add leftward skew to the calculation. Though this probably isn't the case since the plane's velocity did not change very rapidly throughout the climb. So what are the key takeaways from this? Mainly that calculating for optimal climb speed is not really worth it. The graph for specific excess energy is more of a plateau rather than a single peak, so you don't lose much by climbing a bit off of the exact ideal speed. Also, the amount of additional height gained from micromanaging speed is not that significant, and you're probably just better off AFK climbing so that you can do something actually interesting while you climb into battle. There are probably more significant gains to be made by redoing these tests with manual engine controls, but I don't really care to do this at the moment, and I think most good pilots can make up for the slight loss in energy with better positioning and awareness, which are much more important skills in my opinion. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this video. I'm going to bed now. Bye.